Before the start of a mountain expedition, you never know what you will face, the people you will meet or what it will be like. Aconcagua is the highest mountain in the world outside of the Himalayas. At 6,962 meters, the summit success rate is estimated at just 30 to 40 percent, often hindered by the climber's health or bad weather conditions. We start slowly. The first three days are spent getting to the mountain and heading towards the first camp, Confluencia, at 3,300 meters. This is the first camp that every climber meets on a normal route. And apparently there is a restaurant with beer, wine, cigarettes and beds. It's extremely dry and there's so much sand and dust that it gets everywhere in your eyes, in your nose, in your mouth. You kind of have to cover, cover up like this. But then of course, when you do that, you can't really breathe, so it's, <laughs> it's interesting. This part of the Andes mountain range is known as the Dry Andes due to its climate. It's more about the rock than ice and it's incredibly picturesque. The views and the colors are simply magnificent. I don't want to get hurt by that one. But despite all its beauty, it is a dangerous environment where you have to keep your wits about all the time. <laughs> on day five, we set on a long journey to the base camp. That's also the destination for these hard-working mules, charged by the muleteers, loaded with bags and supplies. The base camp is a long way away. It involves hiking for over eight hours over the Las Heras Valley, gaining around 1,000 meters in altitude. Most of the hike is along a relatively flat part called the Long Beach. Under the blazing sun, the air here is so hot and very dry. Once at the top, there is an Andean condor, the biggest flying bird in the world that feasts on dead flesh guarding the entrance to the base camp. Surely, it's a good sign. Concagua base camp called Plaza de Mules. It's good to be here. Very good to be here. The next day we have a rest day where we only have to watch our guides show us some high altitude tent pitching techniques. I need this as yesterday when we got to the base camp I got violently sick and had to slip it off. Lesson learned, slow and steady wins the race at high altitude. And this is the kind of a house that we've been staying in in the base camp. This is a big tent to fit uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. We all have, don't have to sleep on the floor, we have those kind of beds there. Everybody has like a little space of their own. It's nice, this is my things. So yes, very nice casa that uh, we have here at the base camp. And close to toilets as well. <laughs> and we have a very nice view. We spent five days living in Plaza de Mulas, going up and down to Camp Canada at 5,000 meters twice to acclimatize and to take supplies and water. Hidden in between Andean peaks at 4,300 meters above sea level, Plaza de Mola's base camp is the second largest in the world after Everest. It is full of surprises, has a mobile phone signal, shops, showers, and even an art gallery. One of the beautiful things about being at base camp Plaza de Mola's is that we have a shower and some lounges. To relax and afterwards and today it's a beautiful day just for that so i'm gonna go and experience some happiness a new level of happiness an actual shower with hot water it's amazing and also here at the base camp Plaza de Molas, we have the world's highest art gallery uh, this gallery is owned and run by a person called miguel so we will go 
meet him shortly here. This is the gallery where he keeps his art. Hi, Miguel. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Very good. Welcome to the gallery. This is the area where Miguel works and, s and sells his art. Uh, obviously, everything is related to Aconcagua because, uh, well, yeah, that's the most beautiful view from here. Many various people from all over the world come here, visit this gallery almost every day. And Miguel has got loads of different stories to tell. Five days fly by and it is time to go for a compulsory medical check and get ready for the real fun, moving up to higher camps. So literally this is what is coming with me. Of course I have uh, things up on a... Uh, high, one of the higher camps already because it, we took it there a few days ago, but uh, basically that's it. We are leaving the comforts of base camp. It's showers, it's kitchens, relatively nice toilets, it's beds, and I'm going to be moving up to uh, higher camps for the next six days. So it's all going on, it's happening. It takes just a few hours to leave the base camp behind in the far distance and make our way to Camp Canada for the third time. Our home for the night is skillfully pitched, dinner made, and we are set to watch one of the greatest natural spectacles, a mountain sunset. After breakfast, we pack our camp and move up towards Camp 2 at 5,600 meters. The wind is becoming more fierce and the temperature drops significantly. There we go, we've just arrived at the uh, Camp 2 called the Nido de Condores. This is our home for the next two nights and two days. And, uh, there is the next step up there and every single day here has been incredible and this views oh just unbelievable the wind becomes our constant companion this is considered to be a nice day on the way to camp 3 called calera the first thing to do once we have reached the camp is to pitch our tent. With the wind constantly threatening to blow it away, at an altitude of 6,000 meters, it's not easy. <sighs> yeah, 6,000 meters is the highest I've ever been in my life. Everything is of course very difficult to do. I think the air is somewhat 50% uh, thin here, so of course breathing is quite difficult. But it's not, I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, it's obviously it's difficult, but it's not, it's not terrible. Unbelievably fantastic to be here. It was hard work, really hard work. But of course, all the hard work is going to be done overnight. We intend to get to the summit. Good morning. Today is a very windy morning, as you can hear. And uh, finally, the day has come, the summit day. The summit push took an enormous effort. There was some really strong wind and the seemingly never-ending traverse. And this steep part, known as Canaletta, is a turning point for many mountaineers. From here, still a few hours to the top. <coughs> Made it to the top of Aconcagua, the highest mountain outside of the Himalayas, 6,962 meters. It was very tough. It was very tough. But look at the view, it's totally worth it. Wow. wow. Amazing to be standing on top of it. Oh, wow. <sighs> <laughs> so 
soon, it's time to go down via the same route. When we come back to Camp Calera, a snowstorm begins which will make it impossible for people to summit for the next few days. Mount Aconcagua was very kind to me and showed its wonderful colours for the last time with the sunset. Over the next two days we descend Aconcagua. With mules following close by, loaded with our bags, the adventure is coming to an end, but always staying in memory.